along with us. You can click enter class when you're ready. And what it will do is ask you for your email address. And I'm going to put my email address here. And this is a new feature in Bidbox. So once I put my email address in, it's going to say, thank you, class will start soon. I have not started the class yet, so that's what you should see. The reason you're putting your email in, and you do not have to if you don't want to, but the email will give you an automatic copy of this class after we're done. So as soon as the class is done, you guys will get a, an email that will give you a link directly to this class. So you'll be able to go in and take this quiz over and over again for all the practice you could possibly need. So if we're all ready, and I see almost all of you are in the Bidbox app, I'm going to start the class. And you should see this screen. And I'm going to give you a second to take a look and make sure you're all seeing the screen that's on the screen right now. The reverse should be there. It's a blue box. And you should be seeing what you're seeing on my screen right on your tablet or app or whatever you're seeing. Uh, if you're not hearing the sound, make sure you have the sound on on YouTube. Uh, sometimes it defaults to mute. So if you go to your window, it will actually show you a little speaker and make sure that's turned up so you can hear the actual sound. Anyone else having trouble with sound? I see Pam and Deb are, are having a little issue. But if you take a look at the actual window, you can mute and unmute the broadcast. And I'll tell you what, I'll slide it over just so you can see it, guys. Uh, here it is. If you're on this screen, you see this. I have it on mute because I can hear everything right here. But you guys might have this clicked. Just unclick it and put it up to the volume that you need. All right, so we're going to talk about the most confusing bid for every bridge player at the start of their of their journey in the bridge world it's the reverse and the reverse is not only difficult to recognize it's difficult on a lot of different levels because you might be occasionally reversing when it's not right to you might also be seeing partner reverse and not knowing that that's a forcing bid and it's a very strong hand and it's so oddly named for a bridge bid that <laughs> it's very weird i'm not quite sure who came up with this name or 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 why they did but in in this case it's not as descriptive as say like new minor forcing or fourth suit forcing those are easier to remember because it's kind of a clear direction as to the way the auction has gone at that point point. and in any situation where the auction's first two bids are at the one level and when the opener's second bid is above the two level of their original suit. So the auction you're looking at right here where the South player NYC Pro is opening one club and the North player is bidding one spade, the two diamond bid is actually a reverse. Both of the first two bids started at the one level and the second bid by the opener is above the level of the first suit. So one club, one spade, two diamonds means that if North wants to play clubs, one of our, our first suit here, they have to go to the three level in order to do that. And let's take a quick look at the level. Sorry guys, you should have sound back now. <laughs> Everybody okay now? You should hear me. Just give me one little thing. Ah, okay, great. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay, so in this screen that we're looking at here, we're seeing the number of points we need 
for each of the levels. And the, the one and the two level are kind of at the lower end, which means points are relatively evenly distributed. So if we have 21 points and the opponents have 19, without seeing any of the distribution, we would likely want to play at the one or two level at most, right? Because the points are evenly distributed. In order to get to the three level, we need to have the values to do that. So in this case, to be at the three level, we should have around 23, 24 points, right? The, the number right below what game would be, which is 25. So if we take a little peek at this auction here, one diamond, one no trump by our partner, two spades by us, would force this auction to the three level, right? We cannot play diamonds. And if our partner wants to play diamonds, they have to bid three diamonds. We won't be able to play there without 23 or 24 points and if we recognize that the one no trump bid could be as few as six points this means that to bid two spades we are going to have to be able to make up for those times where partner has a bad hand which is pretty frequently right when they bid just one no trump or if, even if they bid a suit at the one level it's still six plus points so that's why this two spade bid has to be strong and that's why it's a reverse because we've essentially, if partner wants to go to the three level, and not, not wants, partner has to go to the three level if they want to play diamonds, we need that 23 or 24 points in order to do that, because we're forcing partner to do that. And that's exactly what the reverse is. The reverse is a forcing bid, right? We cannot pass the reverse, so partner has to do something. So in these cases, when we've forced to the three level, which is what a reverse is always going to do, we have to have the points to be able to handle that level. So let's go back to our screen here and let's take a look at the next slide. The reverse shows 17 plus points and that previous screen is exactly how we get there. Now, if partner only has six points, we need to have at least 17 to be able to get us to the three level comfortably, right? So we're not gonna be going down frequently. Hopefully we're gonna make most of those contracts or above, right, if partner has a better hand. And it is also always unbalanced distribution. We all know how to bid our strong hands that are balanced, right? We're going to open one no, we're going to open a suit and rebid two no, we're going to open two no. Everyone is pretty comfortable with those bids. The times where we're unbalanced though, where we don't have that clear cut auction right away, we have other tools available. The reverse is one of them and for the even stronger hands, the jump shift is available as well. All right, but that's always, whenever you see a reverse or a jump shift, instead of being just a balanced good hand, it's always going to be an unbalanced good hand. And I see a bunch of people just jumped into YouTube. If you are on YouTube and you want to join us on the BidBox app and make your bids in a few seconds, I'm going to type in an address for you and you just need to click on that or copy and paste it in the browser and you will be able to join us for the the show here. All right, these are the six reverses that are going to exist. They have something pretty obvious in common. And if you take a second and look at these auctions, you can see that five out of the six potential reverses all start with a minor suit opening. And that should make some sense to, for a reverse to exist we have to have started with a one level opening bid and our second bid should be at the two level in a higher ranking suit. All right, and Virginia, if you don't have sound, just take a look on your YouTube screen. Sometimes you have the, the broadcast muted. You can adjust the volume there and you should be able to hear okay. Now, what, what I wanna draw your attention to here is all of these bids are reverses. There's only one reverse that starts with a major suit and that's the one in the lower right hand corner. We open a heart, partner specifically bids a no trump and we bid two spades. Now these other bids here by North don't always have to be what they are. They just need to be something at the one level. So one diamond, one spade, two hearts. This could also have been one diamond, one no trump, two hearts, same thing. If the auction starts one, one, and then we bid a new suit at the two level, that's higher ranking, that is a reverse. So I'm gonna uh, just bring this screen over once again for you guys. This is kind of what you're looking at. Uh, when you go over to this screen here, you can 
unmute and mute with this button here. So those of you that may be having trouble with the sound are possibly having trouble because you, you haven't, uh, you've muted it or you've put the volume down to a level you can't hear. So check that out if you're not able to hear this at this point. But this slide you will have when you receive your email and this is every reverse that will ever exist. And almost all of them are starting with a minor suit opening, which is a good tip off to how a reverse is gonna look. All right, responding to a reverse, there are two very important things. The first is you cannot pass. No matter how bad your hand is, even if you stretched to bid, right? Let's say it went like a diamond and you bid a spade with like a four or five count. It does not matter because the reverse is absolutely forcing and it's unlimited in strength. When we look at what the reverse shows, it's 17 plus. So I may just have like a good 17 or 18. I may have a super unbalanced 20 points, right? Uh, let's see, what about for a past responder? Mark, good question. If partner is a past hand and we have reversed, it's the same exact thing, right? So in this situation, the reverse is still unlimited 17 plus so even if you're a past hand you could still have six or seven points and we could still be in a game right so in this case the reverse is 100 percent forcing whether partner is a past hand or not uh what about high reverse one spade two hearts three diamonds peter i'm going to get to that question if you hold off for just a second um we we will see a a good rule for the reverse and it's only if we go back to that previous slide it's only going to be one one and then the reverse it's kind of like the two no rebid if you remember it that way and uh, those of you that are new york students have heard me say this probably a thousand times the two no rebid is 18 19 when it goes one one no matter what the bids are one one two no shows 18 19 balanced because it started with one one the same is true of the reverse when it starts one one a reverse is available. If it starts one, two, it's different. And we'll talk about that in a second. The other part of the response is just to make the most obvious bid. Make the bid that describes your hand the best, your shape and whatever else you may have. If you're balanced, you might be bidding a no trump. But the key thing is to remember is you cannot pass. And I put a little note down there for those of you that want to dig a little deeper with the reverse. It, it's small because I don't want to confuse anybody that's not willing to take a look at this. But a reverse can be difficult when, when the responder has a very weak hand. And there is a helpful convention that will kind of make your life a little easier called Levensol or Levensol, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's helpful to get out of a bad situation when you have a super bad hand. But again, it's not going to come up that frequently, so I wouldn't worry about it, but it is something for those of you that want to go the expert route and dig a little deeper, you can take a look at that on your own time. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a quick little quiz here. And all I'm asking in these slides is when NYC Pro makes a bid, is it a reverse or is it not a reverse? And remember the rules, one, one, and the two level of a suit that's higher ranking than the first suit we bid. And don't worry, if these seem too easy for you, we have lots of other stuff coming up later that will, will give you a challenge. But I want you to see this as it exists usually at the table. And once again, folks, if you're dropping in, the link to the bid box site, what you're seeing on your screen right now, is right in the chat it's also right in the description underneath the video there's a link right there it says bid box 2 you'll be able to get in and play along with us and i'm going to show you the results here you guys crushed this one good job we had everybody getting this right it is not a reverse sorry we had one person maybe didn't get it right but i'm sure that's a misclick so here we opened one heart and our partner bid a no trump and we bid two diamonds this is normal Okay, this is a normal progression in the auction because we started with a higher ranking suit and then we bid a lower ranking suit, which means if partner wants to play hearts, they can do so at the two level. 
right? So they can bid two hearts right now. So we haven't forced our partner to make a decision at the three level. So it's not a reverse. The next one. Now it has gone one club, one spade, two diamonds. Is this a reverse or not a reverse? All right, once again, you guys are crushing it so far. This is a reverse. And it's a reverse because it meets all the requirements. We started with a one level opening bid, one club. Partner responded at the one level. And our next bid was at the two level in a higher ranking suit. So if partner wants to bid clubs, and this is a really good way to recognize a reverse. If you look at this auction, you say, hey, if I want to bid clubs, I have to bid three clubs. So when partner has forced the auction to the three level and we've only shown six points at minimum, right? we have to have the extra values to do that. So this is definitely a reverse. Next one, one diamond, our partner bids a no trump and we bid two spades. Reverse or not a reverse? Uh, Peter, clicking on the button, if you're clicking on the button on your YouTube screen, yeah, you're going to pause the video. But if you go to, and let me just copy this here, if you go to this site that's in the chat, and you can do this on a different browser window, or on your phone, or your tablet, uh, you can go right to that address, and you'll be able to press all the buttons you need right there. So if you're pressing on the video, yeah, the, just pressing on the video will pause it. Right, so if you go to this site in a different window or in your phone, you'll be able to make all of your choices. And yeah, good job everybody, 100% on this. This is definitely a reverse. We opened one diamond, partner bid one no trump. One, one, two spades. We forced it above the two level of our original suit. Boom, it's a reverse. All right, and one more guys. We open a diamond, partner bids a spade. And we bid two clubs, reverse or not a reverse. And remember that question you can ask yourself here. Can North bid the first suit at the two level? Or do they have to go to the three level? And as you see here, this is not forcing us to the three level. This is not a reverse because we open one and partner bid at the one level, but then our second bid was below the two level of our original suit. All right, so one diamond, one spade, two clubs is kind of the normal way here. We've opened a higher ranking suit and bid a lower ranking suit. So we're simply showing somewhat of a minimum hand in diamonds and clubs. Okay, guys. So let's take a look at this auction. We have opened a diamond with this hand. And partner has responded, one, no trump. And it's your bid. This is so we open a diamond partner bids a no trump and it's our bid with this hand make your choice and I'm not gonna lie it might be a reverse considering the topic of this lesson <laughs> not to give too much away All right, let's see how we did here. Good job, everybody. This is a clear spot where we want to reverse. And it's because we have the perfect hand for this, right? We, we have a hand that is very strong and it's unbalanced. And luckily our partner bid a no trump, so we're gonna have the opportunity to make this call. And it should look kind of weird to you guys. In this case, we should know that partner does not have four spades. 
right? They, they better know Trump. So if they had a four card major, they would have shown it over one diamond. So this two spade bid isn't really about finding a fit. We kind of know we don't have one. It's really about telling our partner first off that we have a very strong hand and the shape of our hand. That's the whole point. We just want to make a descriptive bid. We also want to make sure partner doesn't pass, right? If we do anything else here, partner can pass. Even if we bid two no, partner could pass, which might be right in this situation. But here we get an easy way to show this hand very well and we'll see what partner does next. And as it turns out, partner bids three clubs after we bid two spades. And now it's your call. So once again, we've opened the bidding a diamond, partner bid a no trump, we bid two spades, which is our reverse, and partner has now bid three clubs. And once again, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, the link to the bid box site, the site you're seeing on your screen right now, is in the chat. It's also in the comments below the video. You can join us there and you can make all these bids that you're seeing on the screen. Bids are coming in fast and furious. I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds. If you haven't made your call yet, give it a shot. All right, I'm going to make my call now, and it's going to be three no Trump. So uh, some of you want to bid diamonds, which is, it's reasonable to think that on a hand like this because your diamonds are so good, and you have obviously more than just you've shown originally, but think about it this way. Your two spade bid has already shown an unbalanced hand, right? So partner should realize that you probably have long diamonds anyway. And their three club bid was the most descriptive bid they could make, which solves a big issue with your hand as far as no Trump is concerned. Right? So when partner bids three clubs, they may you know, not have a very good hand, but our hand is so strong that we should still want to play game, which is why after three clubs, we can bid three no. And I don't want you to worry, when you're unbalanced, it doesn't mean you can't play 3-no, especially when you get to show an unbalanced hand and partner has something in a suit that you're, you're in need of. Okay, so in this case, you just bid the game that makes the most sense, which is 3-no trump. And that's exactly how this is going to go, guys. We're making these bids usually not to necessarily play in the suit we're bidding, but to start a forcing auction, at least at for one level and then continue afterwards if we get the information that we need. Now let's take a look at the next one. We have opened one heart and our partner has made the forcing no trump bid. So we open a heart, partner bids one no trump, and it's our choice what to do with this hand. I see someone put in an answer already, but I think that was for the last one. Don't worry about it. If you're if you make a misclick, the best part is it doesn't count against any of your scores. And for those of you that have signed into BidBox, which is that link right below the video or right in the chat, if you sign in with your email address, you will get a full copy of everything you're seeing on the screen today. And you'll also be able to go through this quiz anytime you want for the rest of time. <laughs> you'll, always, you'll get a, a link to a site that will always have this quiz waiting for you. Now this is the type of question I like to see. I have uh, seven different answers already. It's awesome. Eight different answers. Beautiful. Only one can be right. Okay, so the majority of you are making the correct call, which is actually two clubs. Now, this probably looks weird to some of you because we're bidding a three card suit, but we have to remember, uh, this is the forcing no trump. So 
it's right to play this forcing. Uh, if you're playing this semi-forcing, meaning it says you probably should bid, but you can pass if you're a total minimum, with a hand like this, you should still bid, right? So this is a time where, especially when you're this unbalanced, you, you want to make a descriptive bid. But the problem here, and the, the reason this is in this lesson for reverses, is we can see a few of you bidding two spades, which is a reverse. And sometimes that the problem with reverses is we, we make a reverse without knowing it's going to show those extra values right away. So if we bid two spades and partner wants to play hearts, they have to go to the three level to do so. And that's a problem. We only have 13 points. And remember, in response to the forcing no trump, we are allowed to bid a three card minor suit. Right, for situations where we're balanced or especially this situation, we're kind of backed into a corner and the, the options are all bad. If we bid two spades, we're showing way too many points. If we bid two hearts, we're showing still towards the minimum, but we're showing six cards in the heart suit. And if we bid two no trump, we're showing 18, 19. And as discussed, we shouldn't be passing here. Even if the no trump bid isn't forcing, we should probably still be making a call uh, considering that the strength of our hand and just the shape of it as well. Uh, pass is not as bad as two spades. Two spades would be the biggest lie on this hand because right? we're showing way more points than we actually have. Right? So in this case, considering we are allowed to bid a three card suit, you can bid two clubs. Uh, a, a lot of the experts with this type of hand, and let's say we have two clubs and two diamonds, so we don't really have a great call, would still bid two clubs, to be honest because it's kind of the less of all evils. Uh, but here, if you rebid two hearts, not the worst. Uh, if you bid two spades, you showed way too much. Two no showed way too much. Two clubs is kind of the Goldilocks zone here. Not the best, but the least egregious lie to your partner. Anyone have any questions on this particular one? This is a, a very tough situation, and it's always going to be tough when you have this hand and it goes a heart of no trump because the second best suit you have is clearly spades, but there's no way you're ever going to be able to show it without also showing extra values. And that's a, a lot of the problems with reverses are knowing when you can't reverse right, and avoiding that situation. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So we open a heart and partner bids two diamonds, and we have the exact same hand we had last time. And Peter, this is going to be going towards what we were talking about earlier. So you, we open a heart, partner bids two diamonds, and it's our call with this hand, the same hand we saw last time. I like this question. We have a good mix of answers. We have about half and half on uh, two different bids, which means this is a very good question. Okay, Gambit Chess. Uh, uh, that, that was a question I, I just addressed. Maybe you didn't hear it, but in this case, uh, in that last hand, if you had five hearts, four spades, and two two in the minors, if you were playing a semi-forcing one no trump, you would probably pass with, with just a, a bare minimum. Uh, but in the case where you're playing a forcing no trump or you just have extra values, like a good 14, you bid probably two clubs, right? And you hope partner doesn't pass. But usually if partner's passing, they're going to have, you know, four plus or five plus. So in that case, it's not going to come up too often. But when it does, you, you kind of backed into a corner of making a bad bid. Your other option is rebidding your major. Uh, with only five cards, which again is is a little bit of a fib, but if it's a very good quality five cards, let's say it's Ace King Jack Ten Fifth, maybe you do that as well. So it's it's up to you. Not going to come up too often, but yeah, good question. All right, and let's take a look at this one. The correct bid is two spades, and the reason it's two spades is because 
it's not a reverse. Remember, that original screen there that had the actual parameters for reverse, it's going to start 1-1, one, one, meaning we're going to have opened something at the 1 level, and our partner is going to have bid something at the 1 level. And then we're going to be in the 2 level of a higher suit. So anytime partner bids 2 over 1, which is what this would be, it's a game forcing auction, we're just going to bid 2 spades to show our shape. And again, it's not showing extra values because we're already in a game forcing auction. And, and going back to the original slides here, when we are reversing, we're doing so after partner has shown a wide ranging hand, six or more points, or six to 10 in, the, in this situation where they bid a no trump or six to 12. So in those spots, partner could have a bad hand. So we need to have extra values in order to force it higher. In this case, partner can't have a bad hand. My partner made a game forcing bid to two diamonds. So we're not worried about forcing it up to an uncomfortable level because we know we belong in game. So in these situations, you bid your shape. And that's always what we're going to do in response to two over one. Always make the bid that shows your shape the best. So if we were going to bid two no here, we would want to pick, take one of our spades and put it into our diamond suit so that we're five, three, three, two, and we're showing a balanced hand. In these cases, after a two over one bid, we're always going to bid our four card suits if we have them. And if not, we're going to do something else, including no trump. All right, guys, let's take a look at the next one. You are the opening bidder. Your call. And once again, we have some more people dropping into the lesson uh, in the chat and also below the video where it says show more in the information section. You can find a link. It looks like billybar.net slash bidbox2. You can find a link right to the bidbox site and you can make your choices right along with the rest of us. And you'll also get a very cool copy of this test that you can go back to anytime you want and practice all of your reversing. And for those of you here now, I am doing this again tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock to noon. Tomorrow's topic is going to be signals on defense. So we're going to cover attitude signals, count signals, suit preference, and we're going to look at a bunch of different questions, and it'll be more of a play and defense lesson. So you won't be bidding, you'll be making your play instead. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, good. Everybody's making the right bid here. Uh, it's always the longest suit you have, right? Even if this were a minor suit, let's say that that heart suit was a diamond suit, we would still open a diamond. So you're going to open your six card suit first, for sure. And on this hand, after you open a heart, partner is going to bid one no trump. And now it's your call. And I'm going to give it a, a few more seconds for those of you that haven't made your choice yet to make your choice. All right. The correct choice is two spades. And here's the problem with this particular hand. It, it's, it's not the 17 plus we talked about technically 
but the shape of this hand and the values really it's an amazing 15 point hand it's much much stronger than that actually considering your 6-5 and if you've ever heard 6-5 come alive this is the type of hand we're talking about a very strong two suited hand all of our points are working for us so when you have this sort of shape even with maybe less high card points it's still okay to reverse because the shape makes up for the lack of high card points and it's not really a lack we're two points away from our 17 plus but look at the power and the strength of this hand so again the reverse is always going to be an unbalanced hand so when you have this much extra shape it is absolutely okay in fact it's really correct to reverse and show a strong hand because if you find a fit which is pretty likely honestly when you have this amount of cards in your two suits you're going to have way more than just the 15 that you're looking at here so six five come alive you bid two spades a lot of you uh want to rebid your six card heart suit here which usually wouldn't be wrong however in this case the strength of this hand needs to be broadcast a little bit more forcefully so the two spade bid will get us into at least a one round force and hopefully we'll we'll see what partner does and decide what to do next and on this hand after you bid two spades partner bids three hearts now we're getting into a good auction. So you bid two spades, and partner has now bid three hearts. We have a lot of different auctions here. I like it. And once again, folks, if you want to make your bids with us, just hit up that link right in the comments below the video and also in the chat. It looks like billybar.net, which is my programming brother. He's a genius. So this is a very tough choice, to be honest. It's a very strong situation. However, we have to remember one thing after we reverse. We forced our partner to bid right so this three heart bid by them doesn't necessarily have to be anything good and remember when you've reversed you've shown a very strong hand already the other options are are really somewhat reasonable on this hand especially when partner has more than just their minimum four clubs would be a control bid four no trump would be key card three spades would be the only control bid you should make right if you want to explore a slam which kind of if partner has the right hand it's actually probably reasonable to you know try to find it but the problem is when partner has cards in the minor suits and a bad heart holding we might be struggling to make four hearts so that the beauty of the reverse and the fact that you made it originally is that you've already shown a very strong and unbalanced hand so if it's right to continue partner should want to take the reins and do that but if you are going to make a control bid guys it would be three spades here and i don't want to confuse you that's not going to necessarily show six five it's going to say hey we found a heart fit and i want to show you control in the spade suit okay uh you can make agreements that this wouldn't be that it would be patterning out there are a lot of ways to get around this through partnership agreement but if you are going to make some sort of control bid you're hoping that partner has the perfect hand for you and really it's okay to bid four hearts and remember how many points can partner have maximum Right? They, can, they can have a, at their best a 12 count and they could really legitimately only have 
you know, five or six points in the worst case scenarios. So be careful when you're the one that showed a very strong hand. It's okay just to bid game and see what partner does next. But again, it's very tempting to want to continue with this hand, and I wouldn't blame you for trying to do that because it looks like, let, let's say you do bid three spades or four clubs. If partner doesn't have anything, they're going to bid four hearts, and now you know it's okay to stop. So it's kind of right on the edge here, but just remember that the reason this hand is here especially is to say, look, when we've shown a very strong hand, we don't necessarily need to be the ones that continue. We can you know, rely on our partner to make a good decision for us. Okay, so on the next hand, we've opened a diamond, and partner has bid one spade, and it's your call. No one has taken the bait yet. Everyone's making pretty good bids so far. So this is kind of a, a choice between two options, right? You can you can bid a no trump or you can bid two clubs. I would prefer two clubs in this situation. And it's mainly because of the shape of my hand. The really important part of this hand is we don't want to reverse. We have to avoid that. And, and it might look right to bid two hearts on this hand. The problem is you have now successfully reversed you've gone past the two level of your original suit which was diamonds so we don't want to bid two hearts two no would show 18 19 so we can't show that so our, our choices are essentially one no trump and two clubs and the problem is I've seen this happen way too many times which is why I prefer two clubs if you All right, can you hear me now? I think uh, my Wi-Fi just dropped for a second, but I see the screen back. Okay, great. <laughs> that was a little scary. All right, so in this situation, if we avoid reversing, we've stepped over the first landmine. But one no is, I mean, it's hard. For those of you that know me and have seen me playing pro for sure, I would bid a no Trump pretty frequently. But in just a, a textbook sense, two clubs is going to be better in the long run because you're definitely going to avoid playing in a 6-1 spade fit. All right, so if you bid two clubs and then partner bids something that's forward going, now you bid two no, right? Because partner's going to know, okay, you didn't bid it the first time, so you have some sort of unbalanced hand you know, with other things stopped than spades, right? So just be careful here. This would tend to show five diamonds and four clubs, but it's... It's a problem hand always. When you're 4 4 4 1, you're never going to have an awesome bid unless partner bids one of your suits. right? So it's okay to just bid two clubs here and then see what happens next on this auction. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so your partner opens a club now, and you have this hand. Make your call. So once again, your partner opened one club, and it's your choice what to do with this very distributional hand. All right, very 
very good. Uh, your choices are twofold, one diamond or one heart. And with this shape and the fact that you have a very strong hand in relation to partner's opening bid, we start with one diamond. We, we can bypass a four card or even sometimes a five card minor to bid a four card major, especially if we have a weak hand, right? If we have a relatively weak hand, we might just want to bid a heart when we have four diamonds or even five diamonds. But in this case, we have a very strong hand and a very good six card suit. And we know we're going to play game. So we start with one diamond. It's a forcing bid, don't forget. And it shows at least six points and it makes partner bid at least one time. So you're going to have another chance to make a call with this hand. Uh, those of you that jumped to two diamonds, that's a jump shift, which old school would be like a good 16 plus and new school would be very weak or conventional, right? So we want to just bid one and we'll t certainly take another call when it gets back to us. And it gets back to us after partner bids a no trump. And the question I have at the top of your screen here is can the responder reverse? And the answer is absolutely yes. And the reverse by responder is a little different though. It does not have to show 17 plus because in this situation, partners already open the bidding. So the rule is when responder reverses and it's gonna look exactly the same way as the opener reversing. When the responder reverses, it shows a game forcing hand, which for those of you sitting across from an opening bidder, that's 13 or more points. So in this case, you should be able to make the correct call here. You, you've responded one diamond to partners one club bid, and they have rebid one no trump, and it is your call now. This is 100%. Good job, guys. Not, I gave you a little bit of a hint, but it's nice to see all of you paying attention. No one's asleep yet. <laughs> you bid two hearts for sure. And look at the flexibility this provides you. You get to game force, and you're only at the two heart level. This is terrific. And this is what a reverse from responder will look like. And notice it's the same as the opening reverse. We responded one diamond, partner bid a no trump, and now we are bidding a suit at the two level that's higher ranking than our first suit and the difference between this reverse and the openers reverse is that this just shows a game forcing hand 13 plus and the openers reverse shows extra values which is for them 17 plus everybody okay with that give you a second to ask any questions you might have in the chat All right, moving forward. Now we wake up as the first bidder after our right-hand opponent passes, and this is your beautiful hand. What are we doing with this one? It's your choice to make the correct opening bid. All right, give it a few more seconds for you guys to make your choices. And I will get ready to make my choice here. All right, the best opening bid is one diamond. Now, it's interesting. Uh, somebody bid two clubs, which is actually 
certainly within the realm of possibility with this strong of a hand. And uh, the two club opening bid is is either 22 plus or it's a hand that's within one trick of game, which this qualifies under that. You have two black suit losers, maybe a heart loser, maybe a diamond loser. So you are kind of within one trick of game, but I'll caution you when you open two clubs, these types of hands become harder to describe uh, because you've essentially chewed up the entire one level, you know, to make your two club bid. So two suited hands like this are almost always better opened with one of a suit, even if you're stronger in a weird way. Then the key thing to look at here is the shape of your hand is so extraordinary that when you open a diamond, it is almost impossible that the auction goes pass, 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 right? Because somebody at the table has a lot of the black suit cards. Right? And, and in these cases, they're almost never going to let you sit for one diamond when they're looking at like either six spades or six clubs. You know, you're almost always going to see a bid, so you'll have a chance to describe this hand. And for those of you that did open at the one level, almost all of you opened the correct bid, which is one diamond. Even when your six card suit is a minor, you open your six card suit before you bid your five card suit. And again, with even less points, it's okay because your shape makes up for that slight lack of high card points. But really, you have 17 full points here, so this is a, a all systems go. And after you open one diamond, partner bids. If I can get to the next hand, sorry. Partner bids one spade. And now you get the opportunity to start showing both the strength and the shape of your hand with the next bid. So take a stab at that, guys. All right, yeah, the correct bid is, not surprisingly, the reverse. Now, we had two different choices. Most of you bid two hearts, which is the correct bid, and it's unlimited, guys. It shows a 17 or more points, or obviously, you know, a strong two-suited type hand. We don't need to bid three hearts here, and that's actually going to be something different once we realize that we're playing reverses. Three hearts would essentially be a splinter bid for spades in this spot, and that's because... The two heart bid is the strong bid. It shows an unlimited hand that's 17 plus. So we don't have to go jumping around when we can reverse instead. Right? So that's going to be your strongest bid. And this is now just showing for our partner's perspective. Partner knows we have some diamonds and we have at least four hearts. That's what we've shown. And we've also shown 17 or more points. And we cannot, we cannot have a spade fit obviously and we also have a very strong hand we have 17 plus points and we have four hearts and some number of diamonds and we're unbalanced so after we make our two heart bid partner bids three hearts and now it's our call uh paul good question partner will always assume you have four or more hearts you're almost always only going to have four, to be honest. However, this is not guaranteed for partner. In fact, on these types of hands, especially when we're six, five, we could be showing just a four card heart suit, but now we intend to bid hearts again if we have the opportunity. And that's where partner's going to figure out that we're six, five. So yeah, partner's not going to not partners usually not going to assume you have more than four but we intend to show them that we have five with our next available call if they don't show support that's a good question
All right, so I'm going to make the the expert bid here, which is three spades. And the reason I, I say that is because it in these situations, what how I would teach control bids, and we should certainly want to at least explore the possibility of slam with a hand like this, with this many tricks. The expert way to do this is when we bid a control, we're either showing first or second round control in the suit we bid. So if you're playing it that way, three spades is the correct bid. Uh, if you're only bidding first round controls, which is a, a good agreement to have when you're new to this, especially. And if you, if you haven't control bid very much, a good agreement with your partner is just, hey, we'll only bid our first round controls. So if you're agreeing to that, four diamonds is your best bid. And the reason we're doing it with this hand as opposed to the one we saw earlier is this is a much stronger position, especially considering our side suit is essentially solid and very long. So we don't need very much from partner. And in this situation, partner has not limited their hand, right? They responded with one spade and then they raised to three hearts, which in this case is going to show four of them, right? So we found our heart fit. The three spade bid is an attempt to play higher. And all we really want to know from partner is, do you have the desire to play higher than game like I do? Okay, and in this situation, we certainly have that desire, but we don't know if partner does. And even if they don't, we'll probably still make a try for slam with a hand this strong. But it helps to slow down and see if partner's willing to cooperate. Uh, Peter, this is a good question. If I bid three spades, my partner will think I have three, five, four, one. And, and that's incorrect, actually. They're going to think you have four hearts for sure. And they're going to know that when they bid three hearts, they've set hearts as the trump suit, right? So partner's hand looks like it's five spades and four hearts for sure. So when they've raised hearts, we've agreed that we are playing hearts, okay? And that should be, that should be what we're assuming here. So if we've agreed that hearts is the trump suit, three spades can't be an attempt to play spades. It's essentially just an attempt to play higher in hearts. And I want to just remind you one other thing. You might think that we want to get to the spade fit because it's 5-3. But in reality, 4-4 four, four fits are much better. And partner should know that. So if we have a choice between 4-4 four, four and 5-3, we're always going to choose hearts. So partner's going to know, hey, we definitely have the desire to only play hearts. And the fact that we have a 9-card fit means this is perfect. But if we're worried about that, and if we think partner's going to get it wrong, maybe we should be bidding four diamonds just to kind of clarify that, that that probably has to be a control bid from partner's perspective. Okay, but I see your, your point. It could be confusing for partner considering that was the first suit that they bid. But the beauty of this particular bid is if you do bid three spades, you provide your partner with the most amount of room. And in this case, we're rewarded with a control bid from our partner, which is the four club bid. So in, in these spots, the bid of three spades allowed partner to actually show the control we wanted to see, really, one of those black suit cards. If we bid four diamonds, even with the ace of clubs, partner might just bid four hearts, and now we're just left trying again. So now partner has cooperated, and that's the beauty of these control bids. We may not be sure we have slam. Making a control bid and seeing one in response from partners says, hey, it's probably worth investigating further. So now let's decide what we're doing at this point. And this is this, the penultimate question of the lesson. So it'll be this and one more, and then we'll be done for the morning. I hope you all have enjoyed this. And if you put your email in at the beginning of this lesson, you will receive a confirmation email with an access to this lesson going forward. Um, that part of the program is being worked on as we speak. Um, it may have the full lesson there. If not, within the next 24 hours, you should be able to access that lesson in full. And it'll be exactly what you saw throughout this particular lesson. All right, the best bid here, once we see that partner is willing to cooperate, is now bidding for no trump. All right, the fact that partner said, hey, I not only am willing to cooperate, but I have a control in the club suit means, hey, we can just ask partner for key cards now. It's really kind of all we need to know about are the two black suit aces, and hopefully, if we can, the queen of the trump suit. And as we see, 
the next bid partner makes in response to our Forno Trump bid is five spades. And in these, in this auction, you and your partner agree that you play 1430 key card, which means that the five spade bid shows two key cards, which are the aces and the king of our agreed upon Trump suit. So they have two key cards and they also have the queen of trumps, which is hearts. So make your call now after partner shows two key cards and the queen of hearts. All right, the best bid is seven hearts. And this is much better than seven no trump for one reason and one reason alone. When we're looking at this, we know partner has the ace of spades, so we have no spade losers. We also know partner has the ace of clubs, so we have no club losers. We also know partner has the queen of hearts, so we have no heart losers. The only potential suit we could have a loser in is diamonds and let me lay this out for you if partner has a singleton diamond let's say and relatively you know they have four trumps and trumps break badly we may have a diamond loser we we may be, need to set up diamonds in fact we always are going to need to set up diamonds in order to make this contract so if one of our opponents has like jack fifth of diamonds we may have trouble making seven no trump whereas seven hearts is super easy all we need to do is rough out the diamond suit and we'll be able to make 13 tricks. But here, if we count this, we have five hearts, one spade, one club, and only three diamonds, right? So in this case, we want to be safe. If we're going to bid a grand slam, bid the one that's most likely to make. And while seven no might make just as many tricks as seven hearts, and it's aggressive, and I, I give you guys credit for bidding you know, aggressively and getting to the best match point game, if diamonds are breaking badly, seven no trump is always going down, and you can't touch seven hearts. So in this case, you can count to 13 tricks as long as you know you can set up diamonds, and you can do that in hearts always. And the cool thing is you know partner is tabling one of two types of situations in diamonds. They're either tabling short diamonds, which means you can rough out diamonds and draw trump and your hand is good, or they're tabling long diamonds, which means diamonds are just going to run. So either way, seven hearts is cold. Seven no trump is only good if partner does have enough diamonds to make all those tricks good. So guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, once again, you are going to receive an email if you put your email in originally. That will have a link right to this lesson. And again, it might not be cycling through right away, but within the next you know few hours, it should be working perfectly for you. Uh, tomorrow, giving another lesson on signaling for another hour. It's going to start half hour later, 11 o'clock to noon tomorrow. So if you're around for that, stop by and make your choices in some of the signals for defense. So thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you guys soon. Take care.